Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, what we're trying to find is the torque acting on the gate. Now, this is a wall that's submerged. The water level goes all, all the way to the top here. The wall here is 10 meters wide. The top of the gate, where the hinges are, is 2 meters below the water line, and the bottom of the gate is 4 meters below the water line. So the water is going to be pushing against the gate, and therefore, there's going to be a resulting torque pushing against that gate, trying to open the gate up. So the question is, what is the torque on that gate? Now, we have to keep in mind that the, the pressure increases as you go down, and of course, the force acting on the gate will increase as you go further down. We have to take that into account. So the best thing to do is to go ahead and draw a small little area element across the gate, right here, where the small little area, let's call that a dA, is equal to the width of the wall, W, times the height of that, which let's call that a small little dy. And the distance from the top of the water line down to that element right there, let's call that y. So what is the force acting on that small little area element? Well, we can say that the force, df, is equal to the, well, let's see here. Let's figure out what we should call that. We know that the pressure, by definition, is equal to the force divided by the area, which means that the force on a small, on any area underneath the water is going to be equal to the pressure times the area. So what we can say here, that the df, the small amount of force on that strip, is going to be equal to the pressure at that depth times the area dA, which is equal to W dy. But what about the pressure at that depth? Well, the pressure is defined as being equal to rho g y, where rho is the density of the liquid, let's assume it's water, g is acceleration due to gravity, and y is the depth below the surface. So now we can plug that in here, and we can say that this is equal to rho g y, and the dA is going to be w times dy. And notice that the density, g and w, are all constants, y and dy, well, those are the variables, so that gives us df. But that doesn't give us the torque yet. The torque acting on that is going to be equal to the force caused by the pressure, or we should say, yeah, the force caused by the pressure on the small little area element and being the distance away from the point of rotation. So the gate will rotate at that point. So the distance here, let's call that d. And so we can say that the small amount of torque exerted by the force on this little strip is equal to the force, df, times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation, which is right there, to the, the point where the force is acting, which is times d. Now, the df is defined over here, so we can go ahead and plug that in. So we can say that d torque is equal to the df, which is rho g y, caused by the pressure, times w, times dy, times the distance d, which would be y, minus this distance right here. So let's call this distance, well, let's call that h1. For lack of anything else I can think of right now, so let's call distance y minus h1. So y minus h1, where height 1 is basically the, the depth from the top of the water down to the top of the gate where the hinges are, where the gate is swiveling. So now we have an expression that shows us the torque caused by that small little strip. If we want to find the total torque, we're going to integrate all the little strips from this point down to this point. We're going to have to sum up all the little detorques. In other words, all the con contributions of all the little torques, of all the forces times the distance away from the point of rotation of the, of the hinges there. So we get the integral of d torque. And since we're integrating over dy, we're going to integrate from y equals 2 to y equals 4. So from y equals 2 to y equals 4, which is equal to... Now, the d torques is the density times g times w. Those are the constants. They can come outside the integral sign. 
times the integral of y times y minus h1. Now h1 is equal to 2, so we're going to write uh, y, y times y, that's y squared, minus y times 2, or 2y, so 2y times dy. So I'm multiplying this y times this y, give me y squared, this y times h1, since h1 is equal to 2, that's 2y, we have the negative sign, times dy from y equals 2 to y equals 4. And now we're ready to integrate. So that becomes the following. The total torque is going to be equal to the density times g times w times, now when I integrate, y squared becomes y cubed over 3, minus, and I have 2y, that becomes 2y squared over 2. Evaluated from y equals 2 to y equals 4, and these twos cancel out. So now all I have to do is plug in what these numbers are. So the total torque is equal to the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. G is a 9.8, and W, the width, is equal to 10 meters, times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get 4 cubed, which is 64 divided by 3, minus... 4 squared, which is 16, and then we subtract from that, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 2 cubed, which is 8 over 3, minus, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 4. So now I'm ready to work everything out. So the torque is equal to, that would be 10,000 times 9.8, which is 98,000, and since the units are newtons and meters, that would be newton meters, times, so we have 64 divided by 3 minus 48 divided by 3, so let's put this over a common denominator, so 64 over 3 minus 48 over 3. Oop. Uh, let's go like that, that's better. And then minus the following, so over 3 we get 8 divided by 3 minus 12 divided by 3. So this is equal to 98,000 newton meters times 64 minus 48, which is 16 divided by 3. And then minus times this. So minus, that turns the, the signs around, that's 12 minus 8, which is 4 over 3. So let's uh, make sure I got that correct. That would be 4. Got to be careful here. So if I make this into a plus, I make this into plus, I make this into minus. So I get... 12 minus 8, which is 4 thirds. I add 4 thirds together because I add this. All right, so plus 4 thirds. I want to make sure we do that correctly, which is 20 thirds. So this is equal to, and now with a calculator, if I can find my calculator, here it is. So we have 20 divided by 3 and multiply that times 98,000. That gives us 653,000, 653,000 Newton meters of torque on that gate. And that's how that's done. So quickly, let's review. So what we're trying to do is find the torque on this gate, which is submerged underneath the water. The gate is hinged at a depth of 2 meters and goes down to a depth of 4 meters. We take a small little strip. That strip has a small area of the width times the height dy. The force on that is pressure times dA, so pressure is rho gy, depending on the depth, times the dA, which is the W times dy. The torque is then defined as the dF, right here, times d. d would be the distance from the point of rotation where the gate is hinged, the depth d away from that, times the force on each little strip. We then define the, t the torque on a small strip as dF, which is this, times the depth d, which is y minus the h1, which is 2, so y minus 2. Then we sum them all together. We integrate from a depth of y equals 2 to a depth of y equals 4, so that's why the limit is from 2 to 4. And we then plug this in. Rho g w are the constants. And then y times y minus 2 gives us y squared minus 2y dy. We integrate that. And the rest is arithmetic. And that's how we get the answer.